boom, coming in hot, kicked on a Thursday. I'm back at the Casa. I just flew back from MLB Network. How we doing, brother? I'm doing great, bro. Hey, do you know, did you have this when you were a kid? See the oh, Bugs dude, Bunny those glass? Cups are the greatest. Are you kidding me? The Looney Tunes cups? Yeah, I'm drinking my water out of like burger, it. Like Burger King or McDonald's? Yeah, I, I can't remember if it was Burger King or McDonald's, but uh, yeah. Jess's grandma saved every one of them ever. They're probably worth a dude, couple bucks. Dude, you can't put those in the dishwasher either because they're so thin. The, the, the glass is so thin, it'll just yeah, and I'm afraid. go in at 85. Easy. Yeah, and I, I'm also afraid, like, you know, Bugs' face will start ripping up, you know, back. You get a shitty mug or something. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, you don't need that. Yeah, dude, so what do you got going on? You good? Yeah, I'm good, dude. I literally just got home from the network, uh, just rolled into the house. I'm glad to be on with you right now. Um, working on getting some Breakthrough Pro stuff going, and uh, dude, locked in, man. Just life's good, man. I'm very, very grateful. Just yeah. was grateful to be at the network, too. It was a fun week. Yeah, it looked good. I saw some of the stuff you did. We're going to talk about one thing. You, we're going to dive yeah. deep into one thing you did. I'm grinding, too. I've been up since 6 a.m. this morning. Dude, tonight, I'm working all, <laughs> all night long. Let's go, dude. Dude, uh, seriously. So you got the draft. You got the NFL draft tonight. So you guys are thirty third team. You guys are locked in. First, first time we're really we're hammering this more with like video. Like since I got here and the people that like they kind of brought in. If you guys yeah. are around tonight and you're watching a draft, just make sure you go to the thirty third team dot com. Go to our follow the Twitter account. F definitely follow the Twitter account. You learn, you've w seen the Twitter. Yeah, I follow. Account. Dude, it's great yeah. stuff. Oh, it's unbelievable. The 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 YouTube page is great. The Instagram page is fun, but like we have crazy dudes. We got Trey Wingo hosting. We got Matt Castle. We got Joe Banner. We got Mike Tannenbaum. We got uh, Rick Spielman. We got Dave Wanstat. I mean, I, the, the the people. Uh, who else? Bill Polian's involved. There, dude, there's a whole wow. scout. There's a we have an entire scouting department, like. I, I have never seen I, – I can tell why football is fun to work for, like, a football team because, right. like, the analytics departments. Then they have, like, the old school departments. They have every yeah. base covered. There's 900 coaches. Tonight's draft is supposed to be crazy, too. Nobody knows. This is, like – this is, like, the most confusing draft. Like, all our insiders, like, Ari Mayeroff and stuff, they're, like – they're all to a man saying, like, this is the most, like, divisive – group of really? things like you're not going to see you're probably not going to see those tweets where somebody gives away which i hate when they give it away before you see the guy get picked you're not going right. to see that as much tonight so anyway if you get a well, shot check it out well isn't isn't uh dude i don't know a ton about the draft but i know that cj stroud they say is a consensus number one is that true or no like kind of consensus number one but not consensus the way it was you know, like like a few years ago, like Mario Williams, you knew like two days before that he was going to be the number one pick. It's not like yeah. that this year. This, it's very weird. The quarterback thing is very controversial. There's like five guys. Wow. They could. There's five guys that could either go in the first round, or like three of them could drop to the second round. So anyway, that's wow. that. But dude, I, I called you when I called you earlier. I am so fired up about a topic right now. And I didn't tell you. I didn't tell you what it was. I just told you kind of like the basis for what it was. But I'll give you the preface now. And I'm going to play an audio video clip for you. And I just want your initial reaction. But I'll set it up for you. So Giannis, you know, one of the greatest basketball oh, yeah. players in the world. Uh, big, huge guy. The Greek freak, they call him. He's got. He's one of the greatest dudes ever. English second language is the first thing I'm going to remind you of this. Second part about this. So the Bucks were the number one seed this year. And he's won, by the way, he's won a championship, MVP, playoff MVP, World Series, yeah. everything. He's, he's as good as it gets, right? They got ousted last night. They were the one seed. They lost to Miami, okay? Which sucks, obviously. You know, you've played yeah. in the game. Yeah. So now, he was asked a question last night. And I, I looked at this. It, this is my favorite answer to any question I've ever seen in a press conference. I've been working in this industry for 25 years. Are you ready for it? He was he no. was asked if the season was a failure. Hold on, let me get Stu to walk by here. Stu, you gotta fucking up. Here we go. Exact same question, but uh, I'm curious for you. Do you view this season as a failure? Oh my god. Uh, okay, because I'm not that up. We, you asked me the same question last year, Eric. Okay, uh, do you get do you get the promotion every year on your job? No, right. So every year you work is a failure. Yes or no? No. Every every year you work, you work towards something, towards a goal, 
right, which is to get a promotion, to be able to uh, take care of your family, to be able, I don't know, um, provide the house for them or take care of your parents. You work towards a goal. It's not a failure. It's steps to success. You know, and if you've never, I don't, know, I don't want to, I don't want to make it personal. So there's always steps to it. You know, um, Michael Jordan played 15 years, won six championship. The other nine years was a failure. That's what you're telling me. No, I'm asking you a question. Yes or no? Okay, exactly. So why you ask me that question? It's a wrong question. There's no failure in sports. You know, there's good days, bad days. Some days, some days you are able to uh, be successful. Some days you're not. Some days it's your turn. Some days it's not your turn. And that's what sports is about. You don't always win. Some other other people's gonna win. And this year, somebody else is gonna win. Similar as that. We're gonna come back next year. Try to be better. Try to build good habits. Try to um, play better. Not have a ten days stretch with uh, playing bad basketball. You know, and hopefully we can win a championship. So 50 years from 1971 to 2021 that we didn't win a championship, it was 50 years of failures. No, it was not. It was steps to it, you know, and we were able to win one. Hopefully we can win another one. You know, I, sorry that I didn't want to make it personal because you asked me the same question last year. And I, last year I was in the, in the uh, right um, mind space to answer the question back. But I remember it. What? Next. <laughs> Dude, you nailed it. That's incredible. That's incredible. I loved when he was talking about Jordan, too. He's like, oh, the nine years before Jordan won six championships, those are failures. No. Failures, feedback. And when you take failure personally, that's why I, uh, the greatness, like like Giannis, have you ever seen his, have you ever seen the documentary on him? And it's a Disney movie. No, I, I'm, I've been meaning to watch it. Called, called Rise. I believe it's called Rise. Bro, it is. It is. It's incredible. You want to talk about failures, feedback? Dude, they were refugees, their family. They were running from, you know, getting kicked out of the country and arrested and all this crazy stuff. You want to talk about navigating your day every day. You can't go outside because you might get, you know, you might get arrested. Um, you know, you're, you're trying to learn basketball just to put a better life for your family. Like, that's real stuff. Like, I remember Sammy So saying, oh, you want to talk about failure? You know, you want to talk about stress, you know. That's when you don't, you know, stress is when you don't have enough food for your family, when you're not going to eat that day. So I, I love it because he's coming from a different perspective than all of us of, of what his life was and what he, how he had to rise to the occasion to get where he's at. So he has, the one of the things Chincha pops out of me, he has perspective. Where you see from is what you'll see, right? Where you see from is what you'll see. And he sees from a different perspective. That's basketball. Now, he's doing his best. He already won a championship a couple years ago. But at the end of the day, they're getting out there. They're trying to win. They didn't win. But they learned a lot of lessons, right? I like I like the, the mantra, win or learn. Mm. And that's what he's saying, too. Listen, there is no win or lose. When you lose, that's the facts you lost. But you learned a ton of stuff along the way so that when you're in that situation again, you can do it better. And I love that, that failure feedback. It brings me back to my career, dude. When I was watching that video, I was thinking, how do I relate to this? How do I relate to what he's saying? In 1999, when the Mets came in to play that one-game playoff, game 163, man, I was having a great year. 330, 25 bombs, 100 ribbies, you know, all that stuff. All-star, everything like that. 55,000 walked up in Cincinnati, dude, that day. Tickets are sold, 163. Here they come. I mean, the energy's booming, man. It is, it is. I got the chills telling the story. It's palpable, bro. And I remember getting there, and I'm, I'm, like, ESPN calls me out before the game to get a pregame interview. Yeah, we're excited. You know, there's a little rain in the air. Al Lighter's on the mound, and Al at the time is dominating. You know, we got Steve Paris going or whatever. And, dude, I remember that game. Like, it was one of my worst games ever. I think I went over for 4, four uh, not over for 4, 2 strikeouts. Al punched me out on my last at bat. And I remember when I look back, I'm like, Boy, that was a lot of anxiety there, man. I was playing. I was playing to all year long. I've been playing relaxed and nice and easy. But the moment got to me. It was like 55,000. You know, the, the, the moment was so big. Win or lose, one game you know, or, or go home. And I remember having just too much anxiety. I wasn't seeing the ball well. I was jumping out at pitches. I was throwing that cutter. It was leaving me at the end. Matter of fact, he punched me out in my last about with Pokey Reese on third for my 100th RBI. I couldn't even put the ball in play. Fast forward, bro. Seven years later, I get a chance. One more chance. Now I'm in the World Series. 
my ninth year in the big leagues. From that moment on, I'd never made the playoffs. Never. I, I have had buddies I played with that, that still 15 years never played. I knew how big the moment was. But I also knew I'd been there before. And the failure that I had the first time in 99, where I couldn't even put the ball in play, was the feedback I needed for 2006 when I ended up hitting 529 in the World Series, hit two home runs, drove in five runs, had one of the best World Series ever as a hitter. That doesn't happen for me, bro, if 1999 doesn't happen, of that opportunity to be in front of 55,000 and just not know what to do with it. I just, I just remember I could not calm down. But not. But seven years later, man, one of the greatest memories of my life are all because of the failure I had in 99. Let me go to the game and say, no. Playing anxious and, and, and getting caught up in the moment does not work in the big moments. What works in the big moments is to take a deep breath, is to calm down, is to have perspective that – Man, I'm so grateful to be here. This is my ninth year in the Big leagues. I've never been to the World Series or the postseason. Here I am in the World Series. So I was looking at it through the lens of gratitude. Oh, my gosh, I'm so grateful to be here. The first time I was looking at it as a 25-year-old kid, I was looking at it through the lens of scarcity. Oh, man, maybe we'll never be back here. Oh, no, I'm, I'm so nervous to be here. So I love that video that you showed, bro, because I had one of those moments as a player and – for guys that are out there, for kids, for pro athletes, for kids in high school, that middle school, college ball, wherever you're at, find your perspective. Find your purpose and your why for why you play the game and why you live your life. That's the first thing. And the second thing is get into the moment. Have fun. This is an opportunity. It's not life or death. What Giannis went through a couple of times was life or death when he was growing up. Right. What we go through in sports is not life or death. Slow down, enjoy the moment. And let's go, man. Yeah, I love that. All right, I, I, I got two. I got two angles on this. I'm going to stick with the one you just said when you were talking about. First of all, what you did was you processed that that whatever happened to you with lighter, and seven years later, you pulled it out. You know, you put it right. into your mental rolodex and you sifted through yep. it and you pulled it back out. I'm going to give you an example that I had. So this is take it away from. Not everybody's going to be a major league baseball player or an NBA player. I'll give you right. a personal perspective on my end as a guy yep. who didn't get to fin- get to the big leagues. So uh, we have where I work now. Uh, I, I love this part of my my job. Is like I, I I work a lot with our interns, like guys in college. If you're a college guy right now or a high school kid, listen to us. Listen to this, like because I, I, I said this, I was so excited to be able to express this to these guys. So uh, the one of the intern kids who uh, was kind of overseeing all the other interns was leaving like a couple weeks ago. And uh, we were on the intern call. It was myself and the chief of staff or whatever. We were talking and we were congratulating him on leaving. And he was like, hey, listen, if you guys ever need anything from me, you let me know. And the other guys were like, we were so happy to be with you and whatever. And so I told a story about this perfect perspective, very similar to what you're saying about taking it out of your Rolodex and putting it in your pocket. I go, okay, here's the deal, guys. I'm like, you guys are a fraternity now, right? You all work together. You all banded together. You all fought together during this and, and you helped each other rather than trying to undercut each other. Don't ever do that in business, guys. Don't ever do that. If you ever do that, you might you might get to the top with the money or whatever, but you're not going to live your life and be happy with it if you try to get to the top that way. So what I did say, I said, <laughs> I'm standing sitting here in front of you guys. We're all talking right now. And the only reason I'm here is because somebody I work with 10 years ago gave me a call. And you know why? You don't burn your bridges. You stay strong. You remember... You remember the good people in your life? Keep them around you. Keep them close to you. Remember who took care of you. Remember who didn't. And and you can you can you can let those people who 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 did bad things to you go. You can you can let them go. You can kind of push them away. What do you say? That you only wind up with like five friends in your, in your life. Yeah. Well, yeah. If you're lucky, man. If you're five, lucky. If you're lucky. You, yeah. You become the average of the five people you hang out with the most. Yeah. Exactly. So I told these guys, I'm like, this is gonna be a great example. In four, five, six years. You guys stay in touch with each other. Keep it cool. Keep it positive. Keep, you know, keep working for each other. Hey, hey, you know, I, I, I work at this job now, but I got this guy here who, who we might not be able to keep. He might be good for you. Keep that community going. Keep that positivity going, right? And the only reason I'm at the 33rd team right now is because my former boss, who I had not worked with in 11 years, called me and was like, hey, you ready to work together again? And I was like, let's go. And and now here tonight, I'm, I'm producing one of the first – Biggest draft coverages on the, in internet history today because yeah. 
you keep that mindset going, stay positive, stay focused, remember the people that took care of you, remember your failures, because, hey, I'm not at the last network I was at because I probably had a couple failures that put me in a position to do that. You grow from it, move forward, and then your next job, you're better at your next job. And then, you know, when you have kids, you know, <laughs> you probably, you're probably, you were probably better at raising your second kid than your first one. First one probably oh, banged yeah. his head against yeah. a couple walls that the, se- <laughs> that the second one didn't, right? Am I right? Dude, I, I, I say to my son Andrew all the time, I go, bro, he's my oldest. I go, bro, I'm strong. <laughs> yeah. like, I, I got no idea what I was doing. Yeah. You know, I had no idea what I was doing. I, did the best I could, you know, then, you know, you got Jillian's 13. I'm like, boy, you're so lucky. You're the fourth. You know, I, I, I know what I'm doing now. You know? Yeah. I know what I'm doing now. Yeah, I hear that. It's great though. But you're right. Change, whether it's sports, you know, whether it's, you know, you're, you're in a, you know, with a production company, you're, you're a producer, whoever you are in life, you know, if you keep the mindset that failures feedback, you'll always, you'll always stick with that, that, that abundant mindset. As soon as you get that, that failure is who you are or, Failure is going to put you in a corner. Then you become that little victim that like you're not in charge of your life. You you lose the choice, you know, to ask, oh, why is this happening? You know what I mean? Like you really got to, you know, use failure's feedback. It's just great stuff, man. You're exactly right. And I love it. Yeah. I All right. It. So I'm going to make love a simple it. transition. I watched this great breakdown you did last night. Exact yeah. same point. Walk us through wh- yeah. how this yeah, translates a, to that, to, to what you did yeah, last up, night. Yeah, up on Twitter today or Instagram, if you if you follow us at the mayor's office uh, for Twitter and at the mayor's office MLB on Instagram. Uh, I put up, I feel like one of my best breakdowns in the last 15 years of, uh, you know, just of Juan Soto. He's scuffling right now. Now, Juan Soto's not going to scuffle all year, but why is he scuffling? Even the best in the business scuffle. He's hitting 180, no power, not going the other way like he usually does. And, I, you know, for me, when I scuffled at the big league level, even at times I was a 10-year veteran, it was because, you know, my approach had really fallen apart. You know, you, you, get, you start getting too mechanical. You're like, no, that doesn't work. And what you start realizing is, the game starts to speed up on you. You know, the game starts to speed up. And then a couple of the points that I made was that, uh, you know, when when you start, tension is poison. In life, it is too, anxiety. So what do you do if tension is poison? In life or in baseball, you got to take a breath. You know, I was saying in the demo, you got to see the ball deep. But just like, you know, whenever I have anxiety, or I had some yesterday a little bit, and I went and did like the Wim Hof breathing, like slowed it down. I, you know, did, but I did something for it. You can actually, when it, you feel it in your body, your physiology drives psychology. Feel it in your body and move it. You know what I mean? So, like, the next thing I was talking about was, you know, you, you get results over process. Start worrying about, oh, man, I got to get a hit. I got to get a hit. I got to get a hit. All of a sudden, that's not how it works. You know, that, that you're letting anxiety and results drive your, drive your process. Focus on the process. You've been here before. What do you do? What's your process every day? What's your protocol? So, you know, it was a couple of things I went through that, you know, and the other ones was, was failure's feedback. I think what happened is we come fear of failure. The fear paralyzes us. But if you look at it as failure's feedback, you say, no, this is an opportunity. Every day is an opportunity for me. What I say is fail as much as you can. Fail as much as you can because all you're doing is gathering information to become a master of your craft. Keep failing. Keep taking action. Don't, take an, don't not take an action because you're scared of failure. Who gives a crap? No one cares about you as much as you do anyhow. Right, I always think, oh, right. this guy cares. No, they don't. No one they're cares not about think, They're Casey. not thinking about you. I learned they're that. Not think- they're don't. Dude. They're not. They're not. They're not. Fact. They're not I, thinking I, about. You. It took me a long time to realize that. You're thinking about you, and I'm thinking about me. So, if you want to do something, just do it, and don't worry about what anyone. They, those fake stories in your head, those nerves you get up, those nerves you put together. Don't believe those. They're not true. Just focus on the process. Go take action. And see what happens. I love and it. And like I said, no one cares about you the way that you think they do. They don't. They have their own problems. Everyone has their own problems. Yeah. Dude, you're becoming a Dr. Seuss of sports psychology. What did you say? Physiology drives psychology? Is that what you said? It's true. If physiology drives psychology. You're dude, so good at it, these. You're so good at these like little mixed metaphor things. I'm being I'm well, serious. Do, do I'm not joking me, around. I'm not, I'm not making fun of you. I'm saying well, it. Dude, I'm very whenever, like we yesterday, yesterday, I got a little anxiety and stress in my body. I could feel it in my chest. Anyone out there, whenever you feel a little uneasy and you don't have the same peace, stop for a second, sit down and have awareness. It's in your body somewhere. It's in your chest. It's in your stomach. It's in your neck. Stop for a second. Take some deep breaths. Have a longer exhale. Inhale for six. Exhale for eight. And that'll calm you down. If you're looking to get jacked up, inhale longer. You know, you know when you go to lift weights, what do you do? Yeah. Boom. The inhale is important. When you want to slow down and get rid of anxiety, what's important? The exhale. So, I love that, man. It's in your body somewhere. 
What we do, though, Chance, is we get the anxiety and stress, and where do we go? Right to our minds. And we let our minds run the show and a story. And I can't believe I did that. I can't believe I said that. Guess what? If you don't get back to ground zero in your physiology and get your anxiety to, to, to zero, now go, go to the narratives after you get your body taken care of. Now go to the narratives. Guess what, bro? They're not there. They're not there the same way they were. If you start looking at your mind with your with at an elevated anxious state, your stories are going to be terrible that you tell yourself. I told you I was going to fire up for this, right? I'm fired up, Jack. I'm <laughs> looking at me. I'm bouncing up and down. I'm jumping up and down. Wait, hold on. Let me get Bella real quick because Macy's about to eat her when she tries to take this bone from her. Give me one second. Hold it's on. like Coriolli said. He's like, we got a zoo going on now. What the hell's going on? Sorry. Bella was literally sniffing in Macy's face just now while Macy had a yeah. bone in her mouth. And I'm like, all right, there's <laughs> death. We're going to see a live dog death on TV. Anyway, all right. I'm going to give one last positive before we go. But there's a negative connotation to it, Chase. But, but this, is our, this, is, this goes right in our theme. I know where you're going. You know where I'm going. Is it yeah. Maggi or Maggi? Uh, how you pronounce it? Maggi. 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 Okay. Pittsburgh Pirates, we all know, 33 years old, making his Major League debut. The videos, go just Google this guy and yeah, watch 13 years, 13 years in the minors, bro. 13 years in the minors. Bro, they followed him out of the tunnel. Oh, uh, everything, just Google it. You want to have a nice day? Google this guy. There's one thing you're not going to be happy about. <laughs> Drew Maggi. Drew Maggi. Drew Maggi. He gets to home plate this the crowd, the fans, Oil City, right? Or like those are the type yeah. of people Steel you got City. out there. Steel City. Steel, Steel City, City, but there's oil cities in Pennsylvania. Yeah, somewhere yeah, around. yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. a lot there's a lot of hard working class people in a town yeah. who yeah. are all there looking at a guy who's been grinding on buses, eating McDonald's, fish <laughs> fillets on Friday. For years he gets to the plate. The whole world. The whole world's looking at him. The umpire. Right? <laughs> Fuck! Part of my language, kids. I'm sorry. I might bleep that. Come on, case. I am so now. If this, it's even worse that it happened to Bellinger a couple weeks ago, and everybody already crushed him. Going, oh, yeah. all right. Now we know. Let's not. Let's go easy here. This. To me, it was 1,900 million, thousand billion times worse. Have a feel, please. Kids, Mr. I, think this is, I, think, I think this might be, not be as bad as you think. Why? Because I, I, I just heard this today, and I, I, I have to go back and look at the video because I think Jeff Nelson, the home plate umpire, did a great job. He walked out when Maggie was walking up, and Maggie got an unbelievable ovation, and then the count went to 0-1. And then Maggie stepped out, got another ovation. Not an ovation, but the crowd was cheering for him. It was the second strike where okay. he was like, he had to do it. The second, the first one, Nelson did a great job of walking out and giving him a second. And he, I think he got the ovation. It was after it was 01, he got banged for the 02. Uh, okay. No? Now you still don't like it? No. Oh, wow. 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 What is it? 13 years? Yeah. <laughs> 13 years. You dude. get two ovations. You get two non strike calls, Sean. Look, now my dogs are pissed. Get over here, Bella. <laughs> I love it. You get two of them, baby. You get two. <laughs> 13 years <laughs> in a micro minors. You get two hey. timeouts in that game. Dude, dude, you want to talk about what we're talking about here? Failures feedback, dude. You want to talk about perseverance, man. Exactly. 13 years. Like you said, all those bus rides, the flights, the triple A flights are the worst, too, dude. Bags at 4 a.m. in the morning. You're getting 6 o'clock flights out. The yeah, worst flights out there. Off. Flying commercial. It's whatever. You know, th th I know that sounds snobby, but in the big leagues, you fly private. You know what right. I mean? But in the minors, you're flying commercial. All the years of, you know, just pay, the low pay uh, for him to grind through that, dude. And yeah. for, good for the Pirates, though, too, dude. Good for the Pirates. Yes. And Derek Shelton and, and Ben Charrington and those dudes looking down and going, who can we call up? Hey, let's call it through magic, dude. He's been yeah. 13 years 
grinding. You yeah, can and in 13 play. seconds, he's 0-2. He's down 0-2 in 13 seconds, Case. That's what I'm really mad about. I'm so... Two ovations, baby. I, I, two yes. ovations. Don't, don't, don't put him in a hole. Let him take no, his no, swings. Nobody put, nobody put Maggie in a corner. <laughs> nobody. <laughs> All right, I, I got to, like, look, we, we're shot out of a cannon today. I have, like, nine hours. I'm going to be working until 2 o'clock in the morning today. Okay, do, do your thing, kid. You're going to be locked yeah. out. I'll call you to bother you later my on. My dogs are here. No. Jess is at, like, a spa day right now. That's why I got two dogs <laughs> in my hands. She should be. Yeah, as well as she should be. She deserves it living with me. But anyway, we'll get after it. Hey, Drew, listen, I'm going to tell you what. No, I don't give I don't give the excuse. You get two ovations after 13 yeah, years in a row. I, I, dude, I love it. Two ovations, <laughs> Drew Mad, you know about Giannis was great. Also, yeah. too, listen, at the end of the day, Breakthrough Breakthrough Pro, come join my program, Breakthrough-Pro.com. JD and I, my, one of my best buddies, international strongman. We got so much good stuff. Tons of the He's stuff huge, we talked about way. today. He is what? huge. He's a He's huge, huge man. He's Jack. Tons of the stuff we talked about today is the stuff we talked about for eight weeks. Let's go. Eight weeks. Come sign up. Breakthrough-pro.com. Come sign up. Let's go. Eight weeks nice. with me, Sunday nights, 7 to 8. Let's get it. All Who right. doesn't want to do it? All, All right, Chase. Right. Love you, brother. Love you, buddy. Have a great day. Everyone out there listening, thank you for listening. We will see you tomorrow on Friday. Let's get it.